back when the Steam Deck was announced, Valve said we are working with BattleEye and EAC to get support for Proton ahead of launch. A bunch of people said, oh, it couldn't be done or it wasn't going to be done in time. But I said from the start that this was required to make the Steam Deck succeed. And if anyone is going to get this done, it's going to be Valve. Not because Valve is some amazing company that just always delivers on their promises, Steam machines, or that Gaben is some amazing leader. No, it's because Valve has a lot of money, and if any company wants to spend that money improving gaming, it's going to be Valve. And then, as of a couple of days ago, Epic put out this statement. Earlier this year, Easy Anti-Cheat for Windows games was made available to all developers for free. Today, we extend support to Linux and Mac for developers who maintain full native builds of their games for these platforms. So, hey, if someone wants to make a native game and use Easy Anti-Cheat, that's cool. Doesn't help the Steam Deck until we get to the second part. To make it easier for developers to ship their games across PC platforms, support for the Wine and Proton compatibility layers on Linux is included. Starting with the latest SDK release, developers can activate anti-cheat support for Linux via Wine or Proton with just a few clicks in the Epic Online Services developer portal. And then shortly after, basically a day later, BattleEye put out this statement. BattleEye has provided native Linux and Mac support for a long time, and we can announce that we will also support the upcoming Steam Deck, and then brackets, Proton. So not just the Steam Deck, Proton generally. This will be done on an opt-in basis with game developers choosing whether they want to allow it or not. Before we get into what this actually means for the gamers, I want to expand upon this statement. So I've seen some people sort of misinterpreting this, and I did when I first read it as well. So let's say you had a native binary for PUBG. If that game was using BattleEye, then that would have already worked if that was being enabled by the developers. What this change is doing is now also allowing that to work if you're running the Windows binary through Proton, which is the way that you would be trying to play that game as it currently stands. BattleEye explicitly says this, but EAC sort of implies this as well, that both of these anti-cheat systems are going to be opt-in for the developers over on Linux. So that means that some lazy developers out there are not going to enable this, and the game's still going to be broken under Linux. Now, I assume that most competent developers are going to want to sell as many copies of their game as possible and will go and enable it, but I do expect some titles to be released without that functionality properly being enabled, even though, besides the anti-cheat, there's no reason why the game shouldn't be working perfectly through Proton. Now, because this is being done through an update to EAC and BattleEye, this is going to require the developers to actually go and patch their game and then move up to the latest version of the SDK. Now, at some point, they would have had to do so anyway to make sure the anti-cheat is actually dealing with the latest versions of breaking the game, but at this stage, I haven't seen at least any of the major titles actually go and do so yet. There are forum posts that are asking the devs to go and do so, though. So over on the Dead by Daylight forum, there is a post. Over on the Destiny 2 forum, there is a post. Over on the Rainbow Six Siege subreddit, there is a post. Uh, one for Escape from Tarkov, and also one for Planet Side 2. And I presume that a bunch of other games have these as well. If there isn't one for Apex Legends already, I would be very, very surprised. I also haven't heard any developers come out and say that this is something being worked on or being looked into or anything like that. I find it very hard to believe that most games won't go and enable this. It's just extra people that can play your game and buy from your cash shop and all of that sort of stuff that publishers absolutely love to see. Especially if it's as easy as EAC and BattleEye are saying, where basically it sounds like just activating a couple of checkboxes. Now, I do expect some games to not go and enable this. I've heard that the Destiny 2 team doesn't really like Linux. Maybe that's just a rumor, but I imagine there are going to be some teams that are like that. We can talk about BattleEye and EAC all day and about how great supporting Linux actually is, but what does this actually mean for the games that people want to play? So, almost every single one of the games in the top 100 games on Steam that is broken is broken because of anti-cheats. So, PUBG, anti-cheat. Apex Legends, anti-cheat. Destiny 2, anti-cheat. Rainbow Six Siege, anti-cheat. Dead by Daylight, anti-cheat. DayZ, anti-cheat. Smite, anti-cheat. BDO, anti-cheat. Basically, everything on here 
anti-cheat, and almost all of them are either using EAC or BattleEye. Now, while EAC and BattleEye are certainly the most popular anti-cheat systems currently in use, that doesn't mean they're the only ones that need to be worried about. So, there are other anti-cheat systems like Fair Fight, X-Trap, Zing Code, N-Protect, Game Guard, which are all far less popular, but they do see some level of use and for the most part, basically break under Linux. You also have Riot's anti-cheat system named Vanguard, which is used in games like Valorant. Now, obviously, Valorant isn't a game that is on Steam, but having support for that under Linux would still be really amazing to see. And there's no point arguing whether these are good anti-cheat systems. They are in use, and even if they're really bad at stopping cheaters from playing the game, what they are really good at is stopping Linux players from playing, and that's what I want to see addressed. Now, even if anti-cheat was completely perfect and this change basically inspired all of the other anti-cheat systems to have native support for Linux, that still wouldn't fix everything on Steam. So there's some games out there which because Wine and Proton aren't exactly perfect, are still a little bit wonky. So for example, there's this random game called Conqueror's Blade. I've never played it. I have no idea if it's a good game. But the reason why it's broken is because of proven ground client error. I don't know what that means. I have no clue. But it's stopping people from actually running the game. And I've mentioned this before, but Persona 5 Strikers also does not work. I don't really know why no one's really worked this one out yet. It's it's basically just not loading the visuals, which is a pretty big deal in a game. And while examples like this are getting harder and harder to find, there are still plenty of examples of games which, even if they're not completely broken, do still have a couple of issues here and there. For example, I've mentioned Ender Lilies before where cutscenes just don't play with a normal version of Proton, or IS-8 where sometimes you just don't have any of the, uh, the controller support working. Mega Tag mentioned some people couldn't get it working with certain versions of Proton, and other little things like that. So it's still not perfect, but if you put in a little bit of tinkering, once you've dealt with the anti-cheat problem, most things are going to work. Until a new company makes an anti-cheat system that replaces EAC and BattleEye and becomes incredibly popular and doesn't work on Linux, and we create the problem all over again. Hopefully, though, the idea of gaming on Linux through the Steam Deck and other platforms like it becomes such a ubiquitous idea that it just doesn't make any financial sense to actually go and do that. I did see some early concerns worried that the EAC and BattleEye support was just going to be for Proton running specifically on the Steam Deck, but I don't think that really makes any sense, judging by what Valve has been doing in the past and the way that Valve has really been marketing the Steam Deck. From the start, back when Valve made the Steam Machines, Valve wanted to make Linux an actual gaming platform so that when Microsoft eventually, you know, locks down their platform like Apple has, they actually have somewhere where they can actually still do business. That's the whole reason why they've been building up Linux. And I don't think that Valve is trying to get into the market of being a Linux console manufacturer. I think it makes more sense that they're trying to basically jumpstart this market and make it something actually viable so they can sort of take a step back and go back to just being a game seller. Maybe I'm wrong about that last bit, but nothing that Valve, EAC, or BattleEye has said has led me to believe believe that this is only going to be support for the Steam Deck. Every single time they talk about it, they mention Proton specifically. Steam is obviously the focus being the Steam Deck, but this does actually have implications outside of Steam with platforms like, say, the Origin Store. So the upcoming Battlefield game, Battlefield 2042, is going to be using EAC. At least that's the way it looks right now. So... Theoretically, if you ran that game through, say, Lutris, you should be able to play multiplayer under Linux, assuming the devs actually go and enable that support. Or maybe you bought some random game from GOG. All of these other game distributors and game marketplaces, game sellers, whatever you want to call them, are actually going to be affected by these changes. Now, I'm personally not that big of a fan of a lot of competitive games, competitive shooters, anything like that. 
generally when I play games, I'll play something either co-op or normally single player. So this change doesn't really affect my experience. But I totally get that competitive shooters especially are very, very popular. And this support will be crucial for the Steam Deck actually succeeding. You can say that, oh, I don't really want to play Apex Legends on a handheld device like this, but a lot of people are going to want to do that, and having this anti-cheat support is only going to be a good thing. And hey, if you don't want to play it on a handheld, you could always just go and install Linux on your desktop computer and then play it like that. That's going to be it for me, and if you like this video and you want to support this channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please check out my Patreon subscribers, generally BearPay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, upload five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out. <laughs>